Creating a safe place in your relationship. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplify Myers, author, podcaster, and your Uplifting Life partner. Now, this particular conversation I want to have because it is the most important area for any relationship to work. Now, in this particular conversation today, we're talking about your intimate relationship, but it holds true in all relationships. And we'll get into, as you see me go through this, it'll make sense to you why if you follow this, these principles, it will make all relationships blossom. But again, in this, we're really talking about your intimate. But what, the way I want to start this off is by a research that was done by uh, the Gottman uh, Institute. And Dr. Uh, John Gottman talked about four particular areas that are major areas or challenges, we should say, inside of relationships. Now, we're going to talk about both sides real quick. We'll talk about the four, but we'll talk about both sides, which is the way that people in unsuccessful relationships handle this particular area and how successful relationships handle. And you know they're going to be the exact opposites of each other. But anyway, uh, in a successful relationship, we're going to deal with number one. In, a, in, a, in that particular relationship, it's always about helping, getting, giving your partner what it is that they need. Now, it's not what you think they need. It's what they tell you they need, which tells you what? You have to ask. There are so many people I talk to that, that will tell me, well, I know what they're thinking or I know what they want. That is, that is setting you up to have challenges in your relationship. The reason is, is because what excites people today doesn't mean it's going to excite them tomorrow. And because life happens and because things change, you have to always be willing to adjust and not think you know how people are going to always respond to stuff. Because as individuals, we don't know. Things are always changing and our perspectives change. But anyway, so the key is find out what your partner actually needs. That's number one. And then give it to them. Now, the opposite of that is the relationships where the partner is always criticizing and they can be little small things that you say but those little small criticisms will add up until one day they become a big criticism and then your partner blows up on you for some reason and you thinking well that was pretty small I mean I don't understand what you're so mad about and it's the buildup of that uh, we've all heard the saying if you can't say nothing nice then don't say nothing at all criticism will create chaos in your relationship. Uh, so stay away from it. And uh, number two, he talked about the relationship where people are willing to accept responsibility for their role in that relationship for the things that they do. Do you know how many people have never told their partner, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I didn't understand, I misunderstood, or I handled it incorrectly, or I should have handled it differently. I mean, I'm saying these in different ways, but that's taking responsibility for my action. But do you know how many people are so intimidated by saying that? They let their pride and ego get in the way? That pride and ego will create chaos and definitely will not create a safe place inside of your relationship. So what ends up happening in relationships that it, that it doesn't work? They do just the opposite, of course. They're defensive. They're always trying to be right. They always want to be the victim. Who wants to be in a relationship where every time we have a conversation, you're always playing the victim role? Or you always got to be right. Whenever you're in a relationship where you always have to be right, what ends up happening is your partner will shut down on you. They will stop sharing. And that relationship is doomed. And the reason they will stop sharing, which is obvious if you just hear me talk about it, but most of you aren't realizing is going on in your relationship, is because I already know you're going to be a victim. And I know you're going to sit here and fight to be right. So it's a waste of my energy to say anything. You guys follow me? So all of a sudden, I stop talking and the relationship is doomed. Number three, respect and appreciation. 
This one uh, goes pretty deep, and I can do a whole video just on that one. Um, for a lot of guys, when I hear the masculine energy or I hear the I am the man of the house and I hear those kind of conversations, they're usually from guys who don't respect their partner and they look down on their partner. I know some of you will get mad that you heard me say that, but it's real because a man doesn't have to tell you he's a man. A man doesn't run around talking about I am the man of my house because he doesn't need to. The bottom line is most of the people that talk that game is, again, as we know how people tear other people down. And the reason they do that is so they can feel better about themselves. And to me, this is kind of where that plays. They want to demean their partner and other people, and they don't, which, as we know, the opposite of what I'm talking about is they want to disrespect and they want to control. They have control issues. No one, especially as an adult, want to be controlled. That's the whole thing. You are not a child. I don't need you to control me. I don't need you to tell me what I can and cannot do. I am an adult. When you disrespect and you're trying to control your partner, that is chaos in a relationship. You have to learn how to respect your partner and understand that they are smart enough to make their own decisions and that's where communication comes into play. As you guys know, I said there's two really, to me, there's two major keys in a relationship. One, accepting people as they are, and two is communication. We get that down, we're going to be on a roll. We're going to make it work. But then the fourth one he talked about is um, the partners that stonewall. They kind of give you the stare. They fold their hands. They look away. They're ignoring you. It's like, and some people call that stonewalling, but bottom line is they're, they're not giving you the attention that you deserve. They're not, which I say for relationships that work, the partner's doing just the opposite. They're listening intently. They're, they're actually, and to me, this one is crucial. I saw a friend do this. Um, when she's in a conversation with you, I mean, she's locked in eye to eye. The world has disappeared I mean, I'm always amazed when I see her do it, and I'm like, I got to get good at that. Because she locks in when she has a conversation with you. It's just you and her. And you just feel like, wow, she's listening. I'm important. I'm significant. That is how you have a conversation with your partner. And that is how you create a safe zone when your partner knows that you're truly listening to what it is that I'm talking about. And the way that they also know that you heard them, because see, we hear what people say and then we use our own um, perspectives. And the way that you know that you guys are in alignment as far, and I didn't say you have to agree with them, but in alignment on what they, they're feeling is you've, you have to be able to feed it back to them and say, if I understand you, this is what you meant. And if they tell you, yeah, that's exactly what I meant, you got it. But so many people, I was just having this conversation with uh, one of the young men, again, that I mentor, and he was telling me about um, a young lady that he's talking to, and, and they're kind of trying to fill each other out to see, are they going to get back together, or are they just going to be friends or whatever, but they're filling each other out. And so she was like, well, since we're not together, we, we probably shouldn't text each other every day. And so he had made the decision that he wasn't going to text her at all unless she texted him. See, that's where relationships fall apart because I told him, you need to have a conversation because you've made a decision you're not going to text her. So she's going to all of a sudden realize you're not texting her and take it like, oh, so I guess he's not going to communicate with me at all. But bottom line is you're giving people the opportunity to make up their own stories. And I always say it, and it is accurate. If you leave people to, make, to write their own stories about a situation, it's usually not going to work in your favor. Unfortunately, most people live in a negative world and that's where they're going to go and hang out and it's not going to work in your favor. So anyway, bottom line, he had a conversation with her with her, and they decided when they were going to text each other and talk, but now there's no guessing and there's nobody being stonewalling or nobody trying to play games like, well, I'm not going to do it until you text. I'm going to wait for you to, you know what I'm saying? Communication, that's key. One of the things that he talked about in his research too that blew me away 
He said 69% of conflicts inside of a relationship are never resolved. That's, woo, that's scary if you think about it. 69% of conflicts are not resolved. Think about that. Don't in most homes, you guys argue over the same things over and over and over again. It's just like they said, we have 70 thoughts a day, 70 thoughts, 70,000 thoughts a day, and about 90 to 95% of them are the exact same thoughts. We keep having the same thoughts every single day, and that's why in your conflicts, they're the same because you guys never, ever resolve them. Got to change that number, okay? We need to get them resolved. And that's, again, why we're here talking about the safe place. If we create a safe place, we can get this stuff resolved, okay? Now, so that kind of, I hope you guys caught the first four that he, that he was saying is kind of the top challenges that people have in relationships. And I'll say them again. Uh, people that have successful relationships, they talk about what I need, they accept responsibility, they respect and appreciate their partner, and they listen intently. Those are the relationships that fall apart. They criticize. They're defensive. They want to be right. They're always playing the victim. They disrespect and want to control their partners and they're stonewalling. Okay, so now let's talk about what's the major thing that makes relationships work. And you guys have heard this before and you probably even said it's about friendship. And I know for some people, they go, ah, oh, man, that's old-fashioned. That's not real. No, friendship. It has been proven. Those who are best friends, those are the relationships that work. Guess what? Sex, romance, passion, those things exist stronger in relationships where there is a friendship. I want you guys to think about it for a second. With your friend, you can be you. However that is, you can use your sense of humor, even if it ain't really funny. And if it's dry humor, you can do that with your friends. They may laugh at you, whatever, but you can do that. And you got to understand, just think if you had a relationship like that. And, and, and unfortunately, I had read somewhere they were talking about um, how guys can be they're, they're open with their friends, but they, they, they're very closed off with their partner. And um, that's kind of going along with what I'm talking about here. That's, that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's why I'm using this example to tell you your friend, your number one friend needs to become your partner, your spouse. I don't care who's listening to this, male or female, your partner needs to become your best friend. Okay. And then in friendship, we talk about an awareness. And you know how you are. You know if you're a person that you got a very short temper. Um, you, I mean, you know the timing's right. Like if you guys are having a conversation about something, you know if the timing's right for you to bring certain things up or not with your friend. You do, that's why I'm saying. People are very cautious with their friends and they're very aware. Is now a good time to have this conversation with him or her? Um what kind of state am I am? Am I upset right now? So maybe I shouldn't have this conversation with them. Folks, do the exact same thing with your partner. If anybody deserves that grace, it's your partner. Um, and like I said, when I was talking about the sense of humor, I mean, it, it's, it's, as you know, laughter makes relationships work. Uh, folks, practice that. And you would do that with your friends, practice it with your partner. So here's some, some things I want you to do that will make your relationship very, very solid. Learn to be who you say you want. In other words, I've had guys that don't want their wives out at 2 o'clock in the morning, but they think it's okay for them. Hmm. You can't ask people to do things you're not willing to do yourself. 
That to me is what a leader actually does. A leader is not going to ask you to do anything that they're not willing to do themselves. Matter of fact, they go out and do it first. They're the ones to take the chance and take the risk. And then you're able to follow behind them. Um, learning how to compromise. That means being willing to accept influence from your partner. And I know for a lot of guys, this is tough, especially those of you who are still playing this macho role and, and listening to all the stuff that people are telling you, stuff that has never worked and is not going to work. I mean, back in the day, you know, this is how it used to work. It wasn't working then, and it's still not going to work. It has never been a time that trying to control another individual has ever worked and ever will work. Treating another person as a uh, as 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 your flunky or looking down upon them. That has never been a time where that was a good uh, uh, formula for a successful relationship. And it never will be. I've used this before and I tell people what a lot of people misinterpret is a lot of times for some relationships in the old days, the man was the breadwinner. The woman stayed at home because that's kind of what was what was accepted at that time. And so a lot of ladies felt stuck, even though he was out there doing bad things or treating her wrong or whatever. It's like, what is her options? Because he was the, the support system. But things have changed. Now she'll get half. We all know about that. She'll get half. She'll walk out on you. If you ain't treating her right, she's out. Or she has her own career. So she don't need you and she don't have to put up with that. It's a time where now you have to actually appreciate and be able to sit and have a conversation and treat your partner like a partner. That, that oh man. Yeah, I'll give me start. I almost got another conversation, but it just it just drives me when I hear the guys that try to use the macho and the and the uh, submission and all the different things to basically make it seem as if they're superior and their partner is beneath them. Nothing can be further from the truth, and those that believe in that don't understand the concept. First off, of of what submission means. But anyway. Woo, don't get me started. Get me on a roll there. But anyway, uh, recognize in your relationship, it's not about being right. It's about doing what's right. And again, that's why you have to be willing to accept influence from your partner and understand there are areas that your partner is better prepared than you. I was just to a gentleman uh, the other day and I started laughing because I'm like, yeah, that's, that's my point. He said... As a, as a father, you would teach your daughter how to be independent, how not to take any mess from any man. And you're going to teach her how to be a boss is what he was saying. And all guys that are watching this and, and ladies, that's what they're going to teach their daughters. That's what they want their mom to be a strong woman that don't let no man run over. Da, 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 da. But then they turn around and say for their wife, She's not supposed to be that. Whoo. Gut check time. When you're very confident in who you are. See, oh man, I'm on the submission and I didn't mean to get on that conversation. I'm sorry, folks. That wasn't the intent for the. You have to be able to say, when you're confident in who you are, that's who you're looking for, a woman who's very confident. What the submission means is you're not in a, per in a relationship with the person who's in a conflict with you. We're headed in the same direction. But anyway, let me let me get off that because you I'll I'll get all on a whole whole another conversation there. But anyway, the most important thing in creating a safe place, and I already mentioned it earlier and I'll say it again, it's a place where you know that you can come and you're free from judgment, from blame, uh, that the person's gonna bring it back to you and throw it back in your face and tell you, remember what you did last year. You're not going to have those conversations. This is a place I can come. And for and, and this one, I really like to throw at the guys, especially, again, the ones that run around this masculine, that kind of You can never, ever, never, ever have a relationship that will be at its best if you're a person that plays a role and think you always have to be this, quote, unquote, masculine macho guy 
because the most important things that in your life that will make you cry. And yes, for everyone, for those of you who don't believe it, your man has cried and he's going to cry in the future. He's going to cry and he's always cried in the past. He just may not do it in front of you because the world has told him he can't, that that means he's not a man. And for me, I'm just the opposite. I said, a man is one that says, if tears want to come, they come and y'all can call me whatever you want to. See, that to me is tough because you just sitting there like, I don't care what y'all say. The ones that got to hide, but anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, what I was getting to on this macho thing is that if you're there, the things that make you cry, you're never, ever going to have those conversations with your partner because you know you're going to break down and you can't show quote unquote weakness. Folks, you got to be if that's supposed to be your best friend, your partner. You guys became one or you're going to become one if you're just dating. You're talking about going to that next step. You guys are going to become one, which means we got each other's back. That's the person you should always be able to turn to to have support. That's what the safe place is all about. I need to be able to come there and be able to be vulnerable and open. And it goes both ways, male and female and ladies. Don't ask to have a man like that. And then when he opens up, you make him feel what the world has told him, which is you make him feel like he's weak. You make him feel like He's uh whatever words people want to call. He's a wimp or whatever, or he's not masculine or whatever. Because if you do that, the moment he opens up and you do that, he will never, ever open up to you again. And your relationship will pay for that. So anyway, my major thing that I wanted to get across in this about creating a safe place is you got to have that in a relationship. That is the most important part of any relationship, I got to know that I can come to you as my partner and be open. And we're going to work together as a unit. And we're going to fight all challenges that come our direction together. That's why most of you said it in your in your wedding vows, to, to death do us part, good and bad. But unfortunately, we in our society, that most of them go good and better. I ain't even waiting for worse, good or better. Because if we have challenges... I'm out of here. Folks, get in a relationship. If you have a person that you're dating, if you're not already in the marriage, but you're dating and they're not willing to create a safe place for you to come, that's a place you should never move in. And I know you guys understand what I'm saying. So as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on Self Love Monday, I'll, I'll talk to you on Monday. And those on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next Thursday. And just remember, folks, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. If you don't have a safe place already, take some of the stuff that we're talking about. Be open. Be vulnerable. Communicate with your partner. Create a safe place if you don't have one. And, and, and oh, and that's one of the things I wanted to say, an exercise that can help you get to this point, um, not just in your, uh, your intimate relationship, but in all your relationships, is get good at asking questions. That shows that you care. You're also practicing your listening skills. You're also practicing with your heart because you get to hear what people are really going through. Listening. Oh, man, I said I was gone. But anyway, <laughs> let me share a quick story real quick. But uh, one of the I always talk about one of the best conversations I ever had was with a gentleman. He was a guy I used to play basketball with. It was his roommate. We went over there after we were playing ball, and the guy was telling me, and you know this is an old conversation, but it's still, to me, one of the most uh, valuable conversations I had. But what the guy did, and the reason I'm saying you'll know it's old is because at that time, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were like the – big players in basketball and, and, and Jordan and stuff. And he was asking me, he's like, so who do you think is the best player in the NBA? And I was like, well, depending on what you're talking about. You know, if you talk about individual, it's Michael Jordan. If you're talking about team player, it's going to be magic, you know. And and then he said, well, what do you think about Larry Bird? I'm like, oh, man, when you're talking about a guy that, that lacks the, the jumping ability and the speed and all that, but he'll pick you apart. And he, so bottom line is, he, all he was doing was asking me questions. 
And when I left there, I was telling my buddy I played ball with, I'm like, I like your roommate. I mean, he's got great people skills. And it hit me later. And unfortunately, it hit me years later because it always kept sticking in my mind. Why was that conversation so powerful to me? Because he listened. And he let my favorite topic, which is me, shine. And I know some people don't like to hear that. And when they heard me say that, go, ooh, arrogance. Ooh, you're your favorite subject? Um, we all are. We're our favorite subject. I remember I said that to someone one time, and she's like, I ain't my favorite subject. My favorite subject is Jesus. And I was like, okay. And I left it alone. But as we talked, eventually they came out and said, you know, what I like more than anything is when God uses me to talk to people about Jesus. I said, interesting. You get most excited when he uses you to talk about Jesus. Because if Jesus is your favorite subject, you shouldn't matter who told him. The fact is they got the message. Huh. Huh. Folks, recognize it's real. We are our favorite subject, and we should be. Because we're with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're the person with us from the day we're born. We're the person that's going to be with us until the day we die. So that person has to become important. That's why... I Self-love Monday is self-love Monday because I'm trying to get you again to love you some you because after you do that, it becomes easy to love others. So I'm closing out again, <laughs> again but, <laughs> but I just felt that was, that, that was on my heart and something I felt I need to share there real quick. But anyway, I will talk to you guys soon and whatever you're doing, enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye-bye.